Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop. In our last episode, we went over dodge and burn, and I showed some different ways that you can see things that you need to dodge and burn, either using a value layer, which is a black and white, or by using a solar curve, which is an aggressive curve that shows you all the little nuances that you may be missing. Both of those techniques are very handy, and I had mentioned that I use it for things other than skin. In fact, I'd say I use it for other things more often than I use it for skin. Uh, it is quite a problem-solving technique, and I wanted to show you a couple of ways in which I've used that technique in the past. So if you're not familiar with that video, please go back and watch it. Um, if you are familiar with it or are familiar with Dodge and Burn in general, here's a couple of creative ways that Dodge and Burn has saved me. So the first one here is I have a picture of Angela here. She's probably one of the best models I've ever worked with. And uh, I've taken it and expanded the original frame, which looks like this, and cleaned up the floor, expanded the frame a bit, and then added a texture. That is a few different episodes of Couch to Photoshop we've covered in the past. And I won't go over those techniques again, but I will list them as cards somewhere up above so you can go back and catch those if you're not familiar with it. We had talked about the solar curve, and that's the one I'm going to use to show you the problem with this image. So if I go and bring up a curve adjustment layer, and I had saved it as a preset, uh, which we had talked about last time. So I just hit load. And whoops, it's got a mask attached to it. Let's get rid of that. I do want to put a mask on it, but um, we'll talk about what just happened there in a second, because what happened there is something that happens fairly often. Uh, so I now have this curve and I have a mask. And so the sol solar curve, if you're not familiar with that last episode, is really an aggressive way to look at an image, but it shows a lot of nuances uh, that you otherwise might have missed. And if you look at the, the texture that's around her, it looks pretty decent. The problem I have is here. You see this glow. And this glow happens when there's a problem with the way that the texture was added to the image. And now that I've turned it off and I've pointed it out to you, you probably can't unsee it. And this happens a lot when people add skies to images. So if you're a person who replaces skies or adds clouds that make people think that they should probably be running for cover rather than standing there and smiling in a portrait, then this has happened to you. So the solar curve here shows that error pretty obviously, and I need to fix it. Jumps right out at me and says, look, this person has replaced the texture and now it's super obvious. So I need to fix this. I'm going to add a curve and we're going to use a darkening curve, like we talked about earlier, the dodging curve, and I'm going to control I to invert the mask. So when I'm drawing with a brush on this curve, uh, with a white brush on this curve, you can see it will darken everything. I don't want to darken her leg and the background. Uh, I just want to darken the problem that I see with the background here. In order to do that, uh, we haven't talked about selection tools much, but I'm going to show you a cool one here. It's the magnetic lasso tool. And basically you just draw and it will find the area or edge of high contrast. The faster you draw, the less samples it will take. Uh, so if you slow it down, you can get a little bit more granular detail. It is not super accurate compared to like say the pen tool, uh, but that tool tends to make people angry. So we won't talk about that one today. So I've made a selection now. I'm going to turn my solar curve on. I'm gonna go back to the mask for the darkening layer we're gonna use. And I'm gonna try and just create a little bit of, I'm just darkening, knocking, knocking, knocking this down a bit uh, so that it doesn't look like it's on fire. So uh, it will not draw on her leg because the, that selection, which we can hide, control H. Uh, remember it's still there though. Uh, we're using that to kind of darken everything except her leg. So I'm just gonna kind of get into this edge here. It doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be enough that my eye isn't drawn to it. It's interesting to think that a lot of the mistakes that people make, you're like, wow, you know, that's going to be really obvious. People don't see things unless they see the before image. So don't freak out if you're like, oh, it just isn't perfect. You know, it's it's fine. People aren't going to notice. Um, all right, so I have that done. I'm going to do Control-D to deselect before I forget. Turn off my solar curve, zoom out, and now I can look at my before and after work. And it's not perfect, but I wanted to get the point across. So it worked pretty well. All right, so I had mentioned that I use it in another way, and this is probably the more interesting way, and that is that I use it for flattening out things. So here is a client. Uh, I shoot product for a couple different manufacturers. So here is a hair dryer bag, if you can't tell, hair dryer. And I steamed this bag and I went and picked all the fuzz off of it and I blew it off with air and it's still a little wrinkled. And sure enough, they came back and said, can you flatten that out a little bit? Because the 
uh, amount of stitching has kind of puckered the fabric. So I created my standard dodge and burn layers here uh, with a mask around the bag and I just added my lightened and my darkened. And now we have, compared to the original, we have a much better looking bag. So what does that mask look like? So if we go and alt click on our mask, we can say this is the lightened mask and this is the darkened, oops, and this is the darkened mask. So those two masks together created this solution. So uh, a wonderful way to problem solve something that otherwise would have been a nightmare. I mean, how would you have done that? You know, cloning and uh, using other methods to fix that puckered fabric would have been a nightmare. So by using dodging and burn, I was able to go in and handle that. Now these, um, the fabric, the texture of the fabric isn't affected because remember we're just increasing or decreasing the brightness. If these puckers would have been more uh, obvious, then we would have ended in situations where the, um, the texture would have been disturbed and we wouldn't have been able to get rid of that without having to warp it. And uh, although this isn't perfect, uh, it is a quick and dirty solution for the resolution we need for this product shot. This is plenty. So uh, I use this dodge and burn technique, not only for skin, but also for problem solving uh, matches where I have a halo around objects and also for flattening out wrinkles in areas where they're not too terrible, but they're bad enough I need to fix them. So I thought I would post this video and uh, just kind of take the techniques that we've talked about so far and build upon them. We're gonna have a lot more videos like this where we're going back and we're covering a project and we're using techniques we've covered in the past. So if you have not gone through the episodes up to this point, I highly suggest you go back, you go back and watch them and watch them in their uh, entirety because I cover more than one thing in a video and you know, I see a lot of people kind of watch about half the video and don't watch the rest and I'll tell you you need to watch the whole video so I appreciate the uh, the great comments you guys have left in the past and the likes I've received on the videos if you did like this video I appreciate a thumbs up on it and obviously uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll catch you next time